What is going on YouTube? Today we are doing a 10,000 try on haul part two. Note, I've done a part one where I've done a ton of other articles of clothing from 10,000. If you're interested in that one, check it out because I will not be covering stuff that I've already pretty much covered in the other video. But before we dive in, I will share all of my dimensions up here on the screen. This way you can compare how things look on me and how they fit on me, if that's good or very poorly, and then hopefully compare that to your dimensions and then make better sizing calls for you. We have a ton of 10,000 gear here. A lot of stuff I have been waiting on for quite some time because it's been out of stock. So if you are constantly frustrated with not having stock, I feel you there. But that all being said, let's dive in to the short section. We have all the pro shorts here. Let's see how they fit. All right, the first pair of shorts is the distance short. So this short, I feel like has made a pretty big wave for 10,000, especially for the more serious runners out there. I am getting more into running as I tackle my next strength feat, which is a lofty goal, which I'll share later in a vlog. But these are the, the distance shorts. These are a five inch medium pair of shorts here. So overall, they fit pretty dang true. And I'll, honestly, I love like the shells width gives you enough room, but it doesn't feel like super floaty or baggy. I feel like if I went with a large, the waistband and the shell would be a bit too big. What I will say is that this pair of shorts, I'm obviously not gonna pull them up, has the internal liner. They do not have the briefs. And when running in these, it takes like, I'd say like 100-ish, 200-ish meters to kind of have that brief settle in. It will ride up a little bit, I think, if you have bigger, bigger adductors and glutes. So once that settles in though, the internal liner does feel pretty good. It's super lightweight. It's a really breathable mesh. But overall, I have been digging these shorts. Plus they have two pockets back here to put your phone and belongings in. So if you're like myself and you like to run with a phone, these are a pretty dang good pair of shorts to tackle that with. All right, next up is the set short. Now, what I will say is out of all the pro shorts, the set short feels the most different in regard to sizing. This is the large set short. And if I go medium, <laughs> they're, they are thigh huggers. Like they literally look like this on me. And Honestly, like that's not really my bag. I know some folks really love like shorter and tighter shorts, but like these daddy long legs don't do me any justice with the medium. So this is the large here, fits pretty true. Like there's a little bit of room here in the waistband, but like nothing too alarming, like they stay up and this isn't even tied. So when I tie it, they do fit really snug. What I like most about these is that one, they have deep pockets. They also have a back pocket. So they've pretty much replaced my swim trunks as a whole. Like I don't think, I can't even remember the last time I wore my pair of board shorts. These have been my go-to. They dry pretty fast and I have a full review up on them on the channel. So check that out if you are interested in them. But now let's dive in to the tactical short. All right, so the next pair of shorts is the tactical short. So these are medium seven inch inseam shorts here. So as you can see the fit, it's pretty true. The larges fit well in regard to the liner and the shell, but the waistband's a little bit big, so I go with medium, even though these are a bit tighter than I would prefer, but overall, like they do fit pretty true, and they've grown on me in regard to their sizing, but I'll wear the tactical short most for my gym sessions and if I'm going hiking. These things are super durable with the ripstop shell, and I love the zip pockets. It makes it really easy to put your phone or your keys if like you're going on a longer hike and you wanna keep them secure and you don't bring a bag with you. These have been my go-tos for that. Overall, thicker waistband too, so they're pretty durable across the board, especially being made for outdoors and gym sessions. So overall, I've been a big fan of the tactical short. They are one of my go-tos that I keep in rotation. All right, so next up in the pro line is the fight short. Now, full disclosure, I am by no means a fighter, nor as badass as some of the guys that 10,000 worked with to create these shorts, but these shorts are super interesting. And honestly, like as a non-fighter, I can really see like how these would be so beneficial for combat focused sports. Down here on the compression liner, we have that more rubber texture similar to the normal compression pants that 10,000 offers. And then along the waistband here, we have rubber too to really lock down the waist. And we have some waistband locking mechanisms up here on the front of the shorts. So they stay super secure. So check it out. These are the medium seven inch inseam shorts, by the way. And overall, like I have been really enjoying these. Like every once in a while or once in a blue moon in my training, I'll do like some light casual boxing and I'll do some rolling on a mat at the gym I go to. And overall, like these shorts have been my go-to for that. And that's actually what I tested them for to help others like decide if contextually they're appropriate for their needs and training. But overall, I've been digging these shorts. I think there are a lot of cool tech features in them, but do note if you are a recreational guy looking into the short, 
There are no pockets on these, so keep that in mind if you plan to use these for things like running, lifting, etc., where you may want to have music with you. All right, so next up is the interval pant. So these have been out of stock for so long that when they finally got back in stock, I grabbed two pairs. I got the iron and then the black. This is a large. The medium were a bit too tight on me. Like the largest waistband is a tad bit large, but like when I tie it up lightly, it fits perfectly fine and there's no overlap. So this is a way better size just per my legs too. Like I actually have room. I don't necessarily like my joggers to be so tight that you could see literally every quad muscle. I'm, don't really like tight pants because also I just don't like how they feel but overall like the larges have been fitting pretty dang awesome like they fall down too if you pull them up like you might have to pull them down a little bit but overall like even if I go into deep knee flexion or hip flexion like if I want to wear these for a warm-up they fall back down pretty dang well and overall I'm a fan of the zip pockets because they're also pretty deep so if I want to put things in my pockets and keep them secure these pants have been pretty phenomenal for doing it but overall, interval pant, I'm a big fan of. These will definitely be one of my go-tos for the fall. All right, so next up on the menu is the Recover Sweat and Crew. So out of all the items, I think in this last try-on haul, these have been by far like the most exciting to get because number one, I don't really have any good pairs of like just lounging sweats and crew sweatshirts. So having these have been like a game changer because they are so freaking comfortable. So both of these are a large. Like, as you can see, they could probably be a little bit tighter, and the waistband on the sweats, too, is a little bit loose, so these are actually tied up, but overall, like, we have a tiny bit of overlap down here, but when lounging and when wearing stuff like this, I actually like it a little bit large because, one, if I'm lounging around all day, I don't want my stuff to fit super tight. Well, I guess that's a consistent theme in all of my apparel and stuff that I wear, but overall, like, check out the sizing. I think my favorite part about these is just the sweats. Like, Deep pockets, super comfortable. These are great for walking the dog with, just lounging around, going to grab a coffee. I don't think I'll probably ever wear these two together. I don't know why, but I feel I feel really silly wearing like just this whole outfit. I feel like a schoolboy or something, I, I don't know. But overall, I have been really digging both the sweatshirt and the pant. They are so comfortable. I just don't think I'll wear them together. I'll probably mix and match them a little bit, just because again, like, I look like a kid going to school in his little outfit. <laughs> All right, next up, we're gonna talk about a few hoodies and pullovers, and then we'll dive into tank tops and wrap this video up. So this is the Midweight Tech Hoodie, the zip. This is a large, so check out the sleeve length. I have a little bit of room here, but personally, like when I extend my arms with hoodies, I hate when my sleeves come up. So I always like to have my stuff a little bit big, and also with stuff like this that has a zipper, I know I'm gonna be wearing stuff underneath, so when the fall and winter come, and I wear this over something like a sweater or whatever else, it's gonna be a little bit thicker. So I want a little bit more room up here, so check out the sizing. Overall, I think I could get away with a medium, and I think honestly it would fit really well. I would just worry that if I'm wearing something thick underneath, this is a durable shirt, so if I was wearing something like a lighter sweater, et cetera. The medium might feel a little bit tight. The large feels like it's a bit more casual and big, a bit more roomy for me, which I am a big fan of. But overall, I'm a fan of this. I think I could probably lock, rock a medium and large just for the record. So if you are in between sizes and you're similar to my sizes, keep that in mind. It really depends on if you want your stuff to fit a little bit bigger or a bit more snug, but that's a personal preference question. All right, so next up is the mid-weight tech hoodie. So this is a large, and I think honestly, like. The large is the call for this for me personally because when I wear this, contextually speaking, in the fall and winter, it's going to be to the gym, so I want a little bit of room when I'm warming up. I don't want something super skin tight, or it's going to be out and about like grabbing coffee, walking the dogs, running errands, so check out the fit here. This is a large on me. Overall, I think this is definitely the best size for me once again. Um, don't mind the dog hair on this. No matter how much I lint roll, I just it's a, it's a failing effort with these damn dogs. But overall, like the sleeves, they don't come up if I extend my arm, which I'm a huge fan of. We also have some internal zippers down here on the pockets, which is a pretty cool feature for keeping your belongings safe. So if you are wearing shorts or something with this hoodie and you're like going out for a hike or whatever and you wear this with you, you can secure your belongings here if your shorts aren't the best for securing your belongings. But overall, Midway Tech Hoodie has been one of my go-tos for warm-ups and just more casual wear where the temperature is not so frigid to where I can get away with wearing this with just a t-shirt. I just have on the durable shirt under this and overall plenty of room up here. I don't feel limited at all. All right, so next up and last for our hoodies is the Merino Tech Hoodie. So this is a large on me. Something to note with this hoodie and the Midway Tech Hoodie is that this one actually feels 
a bit snugger throughout. I still have good range of motion in my arms and at the sleeve, they don't extend up, but just overall with the blend of the materials, I think it just fits a bit more snug and it fits a bit more true around your chest and torso. But overall, man, I am a real big fan of this hoodie. It's so freaking comfortable. Like I will, I will wear this to warm up in or just out and about. This is actually probably a bit more of my go-to than the Midway Tech hoodie at this point, just because it is so comfortable. Like I can wear this for colder days and I never really have an issue with getting cold or like when getting through this hoodie. So I think overall the material blend is a bit better with this hoodie. And I forgot to mention that I actually have written reviews on pretty much most of the products that I've talked about in this video. So check those out on my site, that fit friend, if you are interested in them. But overall, Merino Tech hoodie I think is a big hit. I know the price is a tad higher, but I think if you take good care of this hoodie and also wash it accordingly, so you don't break it down really fast with durability in the dryer, etc., this hoodie will last you a while, especially if you just take good care of it. So if you are skeptical of the price, if you take good care of it, I think this hoodie should last you. And honestly, it is very comfortable. All right, next up on the docket, we have the Overzip. So this is a large, adequate sleeve length here. They don't roll up on me at all. And it does fit a bit more true or at least snug around the chest and delts. Honestly, I feel like if you have a really great chest and big shoulders, this is gonna look great on you because it makes me look kinda jacked and like, I, I like that a lot. I feel like I'm a big dude in this, but reality is it's, I'm a very shriveled man inside. But overall guys, this is a pretty light layer. Like you can pretty much see through it. it has good maneuverability to it. It's a good layer to put like underneath a zip hoodie when you're in colder months and you want two different layers to add a little bit of warmth to your training. So if you're wearing this to the gym, for example, you could shed that top layer, warm up in this, and then you have this to shed, and then you're in a t-shirt, whatever. And it's like a good, I think, progression to get you into your training sessions on those colder, frigid months. You can also wear this out and about. Like it doesn't look super, like I'd say overly gym focused. It does look pretty good on a casual basis. So if you do like over zips for either layering or just wearing out and about, this is a pretty good option to tackle and do that with. All right, so next up is our two tank tops. So first is the lightweight tank. This is a large. Overall, I really enjoy the chest up here and how it fits. It is a bit large down here. Like I feel like I should be playing some basketball or something in this, but I will wear this on a more casual basis just around if I feel like also having the water pistols out to show the crowd. But overall, I think this is definitely the size that's gonna be best for me. I tried a medium and that sucker is just way too tight. Like. It was like just, just too tight for my blood. So overall, if you like your stuff to fit a bit large and you like tank tops, the lightweight tank is a good option for just more casual training and even lighter runs. Feels pretty lightweight, doesn't really cause that much chafing. I will say like it can cause chafing for some folks I have seen. So be a little bit weary of that. But I think for the vast majority of guys, you're not gonna have any chafing issues in the lightweight tank. But now let's dive in to our second tank, AKA my favorite, the distance tank. All right, last but not least, we have the distance tank. So this is a large. So I think if I had to choose between the two, the distance tank is by far my favorite. It's just so lightweight. And honestly, the material has a nice stretch to it. It's super cool. You can wear this to lift in, you can wear this to run in, and it's super maneuverable and comfortable and very lightweight, so it breathes really well. And overall, like I feel like it's pretty flattering on the body, and it doesn't hug any area too tight and then have any area that's too big. So it's like a good in-between ground here. So this is a large, and honestly, it fits really well. I do think the medium is a tad too tight for me just because of the chest. And overall, I think the large is definitely the play if you have dimensions similar to mine and you want a little bit more breathability in your tank. But man, I am really impressed by this. It feels like it was like a, <laughs> it feels like almost like they just had a material and literally just cut it out from that. And it's like that lightweight, like there's not a ton of seams and hems to it. So if you want something for longer distance runs and you want to wear a tank and not go shirtless, etc., the distance tank is definitely gonna be the call for you. All right guys, that wraps up this 10,000 try on haul part two. Once again, I have filmed a part one where I talk about all the core shorts, the t-shirts, the long sleeve versatile shirt, and a couple of other apparel options. So check that out, it is linked below. And as always, if you have any questions on different products and contextualizing them for your needs and wants or about sizing, hit me in the comments below or reach out to me personally. And as always guys, drop a like on the video and drop a subscribe to the channel. And before we wrap this up, I do wanna make it incredibly clear that I do help 10,000 out with the formulation of some of their more strength focused products. So 
with things like the foundation pant, which is coming soon, the deadlift sock that is coming soon, and reworking the foundation shorts. I have been assisting them because I'm a barbell athlete. They are getting my strength focused opinion on some of the apparel. I am not a salaried athlete. I am not getting paid to make this video. However, if you do use my link, I do make a small commission on the sale, which does really help out, especially as I continue to make more videos and pump out more content. But I do want to make that incredibly clear before we take this video out. But as always, guys, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.